We have woven all 25 inches of our pillowcase. You can tell because the stitch markers on the side are marking every four inches. Uh, we've one, woven one inch past our last stitch marker. We've got 25 inches here, and we're ready to go ahead and take our piece off the loom by cutting it off the back beam. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and loosen the tension just a little bit. It gives you some slack to play with and makes it easier to cut off the back. So I've made that a little slack. Go ahead and cut this off. You don't need this anymore. Leave about four inches just to be safe. That's done. And then we're going to rotate the loom so we can get to the back of it really easily. Now, there's no going back, so make sure you've got 25 inches of fabric in the front. Now we're going to go ahead and cut. What you want to do is leave a couple inches. In a scarf it would be fringe, but here it's just extra yarn to be safe. A couple inches of warp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut about halfway between the heddle and the back beam, the dowel. I'm going to take our scissors and carefully cut down the line. It is off. The dowel now, and rotate the loom back towards yourself, and you can pull this through, through the heddle now. So it's off of there, now we're going to take the tension completely off, just release the gear all the way, and we're going to carefully unroll this from the front beam. And as you can see, that's still attached. You can either cut or untie off the front beam. I prefer to cut it, it's just a little bit faster. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Make sure not to snip your ties here that are part of the loom. Just between the knots and the waist yarn here. Okay, so our piece is completely off now. I'm just going to fold this up and get this out of the way. So now we're off the loom and we're ready to set it up as a pillowcase. Alright, so we're ready to start sewing. The first thing you want to do is deal with the waist yarn in the front here. I like to take my scissors and cut through these loops here just so that they're not continuous anymore, it makes it easier to pull it out. You can do it on both sides. You can see there's a loop where it's turned the corner and come back around. That's where you snip. You can pull the first line out really easily. Just gently tug it out without pulling on the hawthorn too much. You can just snip the loop on the left side, and then just ease it out on the next row. And that one's done. And I'm going to snip on this side, and that should just pull out side to side. I'm going to hold it down with my hand, and I'm do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to hold it down a little bit so I can scoot out under my hand, and one more. Just like that. Alright, so you have pretty short fringe here. I'd say you've got about an inch and a half here. That's fine. The other side is a little bit longer. We left it longer just to be safe. You can go ahead and trim that to match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the fabric in half, line up the edges, you can see that other layer right underneath it. I'm going to trim along that with the scissors. It doesn't have to be precise, you can just eyeball it. All right, now we're ready to start sewing up the sides. We're going to start with these sides here, and then 
we're going to stuff the pillow in the top and sew that shut. I like to use the stitch markers we used earlier, our locking stitch markers, and I pin the two sides together just to keep them even so things aren't moving around too much. You have to worry about lining things up as you go. I like to start the fold corner and also do another one closer to the top, not at the top, but close to the top, about an inch, inch below. You don't want to pull the stitches. And put it through the first two strands. Go ahead and lock those together. Now do two more together in the middle, just to be safe, evenly spaced. Now you'll have nothing work to worry about. And just do that on the side you're working on. You don't need to worry about the other side quite yet. With these locking stitch markers, you can unlock them as you go and take them off. All right, so you can leave these tails out. That's where I join the yarn. And I'll have the yarn about three inches out and where I join the second piece. So you can just leave that there. I'm gonna snip that off just to get it out of the way. All right, now you take your, your thread of Abernathy and I think that'll blend in a little bit easier. So you, it won't stand up as much if I do any mistake stitches. So it'll blend in a little bit more. I put that on my bent tip tapestry needle, needle, the small size. It makes it easier with the bent tip to feed it in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom corner and work my way up with a whip stitch. Go ahead and put it between, you see there's the first warp thread here. You can see the second one right alongside. You want to go between those two. So insert your needle right through there between the first one and the second one, just in that corner. You pull it through. And then you tie a double knot with your tail. One, two, just to make sure everything's secure. So to whip stitch, I would pin this tail out of the way, which is your finger. And then you bring your needle from one side through to the other, again, through those first two warp threads, and just pull it through. You're gonna come back towards yourself, and then go back in again. And I would just skip two weft threads, so your, it says vertical threads, and you've got your weft going side to side. So you've got your warp going up and down. So just go ahead and skip those two warp threads going side to side, and then go in. And then keep doing that, skipping two, three, two threads, and you're going in right along the edge, all the way up. You can go ahead and just adjust your tension as you go so that it's laying flat. I'm going in again. And then as you come to the stitch marker, go ahead and unclip it and get it out of the way. You don't need that anymore. You'll help hold everything with your finger as you go until the next one. Then you just keep going. You work this way all the way up until you reach the end at the top, and I'll show you how to finish that in the next part. And then we'll move on to the next part on the other side. All right, so we've gotten all the way to the top. We've stopped just a little bit short of the last couple of rows, just because things get a little loose in there, and if you put a stitch in there, it might threaten to pull everything out. So we'll take care of that side when we sew up the top. What we're going to do now is go one more in and tie a knot. So we're gonna go in through that loop and tug it tight, and then we're gonna go in one more time to the same spot and just tie another knot. That way it's nice and secure. And then we're going to trim it, and you're done with that side. All right, so we're ready to do our second side. There's something I wanted to mention really quick, is that when you're cutting your yarn when you're ready to sew the two sides together, make sure that it's at least three times as long as the length you're sewing. So I like to measure it really quickly. One, 
two, three. So we're good. Gives you plenty of yarn to work with. You won't have to do another piece. So the same thing on this side. We're gonna use our stitch markers again and attach these two sides together. This time I'm starting at the top. So again, about a half inch down. To be quite as precise on this side because we've already gotten the other one sewn up, so it's not such a big deal. It just helps along the way. I'm just gonna do one in the middle. Since we did them on the other side, you, you don't need to keep it as secure. All right, now we're ready to start. So again, we're gonna go in the bottom corner here between, just a little bit up from the bottom, between those first and the second warp threads. We're gonna pull it through and tie a square knot. One, two, nice and secure. Then we're going to go from the fabric side facing you to the back side. About two weft, weft rows up between the first and second warp threads. Going front to back, then we're gonna come back to the front again, going two threads up and then through, up, pull it tight. And we're gonna pull it like this all the way up to the top, just like we did on the other side. Just below the end, just a few rows. And then I'll meet you back here and we will sew up the top. All right, so we've sewed up both sides and now we're ready to insert the pillow form and go across the top. If you were, if you had a sewing machine, instead of hand sewing, you could, you could zigzag stitch up the sides and narrow zigzag stitch just to seam it shut. And what I would do is, is I would zigzag stitch also across the top to secure the last line. If you don't have a sewing machine, don't worry. It's just another step that can make it more secure. Since we don't have one here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this inside out, which is the next step either way. So now this is right side out. All of our seams are towards the inside. It's a good time to look and make sure you've got a visual check and there's no big holes that you caught everything just fine. What we're gonna do next is insert our pillow form inside of our case. You take your pillow form, your 12 inch pillow form, and just ease it in, making sure to pinch the fabric about two inches down. It's not right at the edge. It's not very secure. So you want to pinch in a little bit as you insert the pillow. Make sure you grab really solid fabric down there. I'm going to stick my hand in and just grab the bottom corner and help it get down all the way down to the bottom. And just ease it in to the bottom corners. I'm going to go on this side. And once you get that sewed up, it's just a little hard to adjust it. So you want to make sure it's adjusted, or it's in there just how you wanted it before you sew it up. Looks pretty good to me. The next step is to tuck our tag in, or trim it off if you'd like. And then we're going to make our, we're going to sew up right along the bottom. So what I do is I tuck the fringe in all the way around. and make sure that you're keeping your side seam along the side of the pillow. They tend to get a little twisted, so just adjust as you go. Make sure that everything's nice and even. Make sure that all that fringe is in. And then I like to, now that it's tucked in and flush with the pillow, I like to pull out just a little bit more fabric to give me something to work with. So you're just seeing the fringe is right there. You've got maybe about a quarter inch folded over at the end of the day. So you've got about a quarter inch, a little bit over. You can tuck your pillow in. All 
right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the locking stitch markers just to kind of tuck everything in and keep it secure. Give, give myself some room to work with. It's more important than the other sides even because you've got all this filling inside. Go ahead and put that guy maybe about an inch and a half in from the side. Do the same thing on the other side. I like to do two in the center. Making sure just to grab the fabric, not the pillow or anything. I like to pull it taut just to see, make sure that everything's lined up because an uneven pillow isn't going to work. That you can tell it's uneven, so I'm just going to adjust it. It's a little fiddly, but it's worth it. I think I'm going to do one more. There. All right, so everything's kind of tacked into place. It looks, looks pretty good. And we're going to do something that I call, it's like a modified mattress stitch, but it's not a real mattress stitch because I don't think it's gonna lay flat. So it's called a mat modified mattress stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take that corner, the corner that's closest to me, and I'm gonna insert my needle just right through that center corner. I'm gonna pull it through I'm going to tie a knot, and I'm going to tuck the tail inside. You're just going to tuck it in, and that'll be the start of your seam. All right, so now what I'll do is I will, along the top here, you can see the warp threads kind of arcing up. I'm going to go underneath two of them at a time here, just like that. And I'm going to pull the needle through. I put it underneath two warp threads, and I'm going to come to the back side. I'm going to find the first two warp threads over here, and I'm going to go underneath both of those. Usually we're going back and forth along the top, along the top seam opening here. And you're going to come back to the front edge here, and you're going to go underneath the next two warp threads and pull through there. And you do the same thing in the back. So the next two warp threads, you go underneath those. You're going to work like that all the way across to the end. I'm going to keep on going underneath the next two on each side. And I'll meet you back here to show you how to finish it off. And remember to move, remove your stitch markers as you go. go we're going to go ahead and tie that last knot. So go ahead and thread it one more time. Going through, you're going to tie one here. And then go one more time. There's just a little hole here. I'm going to close that and tie your knot. And then what I do is I thread the needle into the middle of the pillow, kind of as far as I can get through. It's about there. I'm going to pull it through. Just to get that tail inside. And then like that. And then I'm going to use my scissors. And I like to pull it a little tight, cut it, and it will pull that tail inside. So, you can see, we finished our pillow.